Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to another edition of AwesomeCallsTrading.com live recap webinar. I am AJ. I'll be your host for the next 8 to 10 minutes of our room. Secret Sauce is um, it's, it's really important um, when you're a part of our group that, you know, I do these pre-market notes and plan every day. I get ranked anywhere from 90 to 100% a day of my accuracy on the calls. But, you know, rather than keep get the applause of, oh, wow, you were great on that. I go that extra step for the trade, for the members in the room, and I really want to explain what I saw and how I saw it. And this way, what will happen is, as traders learn throughout the process what I'm doing and my process and my thinking of how I set up a trade and what a stock's going to do, the better the trader will become, the more confident the trader will become, and the more shares the trader will become, be able to trade. Therefore, more shares mean more profits, more income, and but more, more importantly, consistency. If you understand the move before the stock even moves, okay, imagine that for a second, okay? You know, I was listening to, you know, it was funny. I was listening to Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street, and it was so funny. I mean, I enjoy, I, I enjoy, uh, good job, Michael. Awesome. Uh, uh, everyone, six trades, all green today. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Michael R. Very nice of you. I was listening to Wolf of Wall Street, and there, remember there was a speech by Matthew McConaughey with Leonardo DiCaprio in a scene, and he was ordering his martinis, and he made a, he made a, he was waving his hand. He goes, he said, traders don't know where the stock's going to go, what the stocks are going to do. Nobody knows that stuff. You know, when I listen to that, I think to myself, I do. I'm that rare guy, that rare person in the world out there that does. I don't know what it is. I don't know the, the gift God gave me, but he gave it to me. It's in my blood. It's who I am. So I do my very best. Even though I know where the stock's going to go before it goes, it's my job to educate a trader, show them what I've learned, show them what I saw. And that's what Secret Sauce is all about. And for annual subscribers, I will be recording those sessions for them. So this way they can go back anytime they want just to listen to them if you're an annual subscriber to Awesome Calls for 2020. Anyway, I'm going to take you through a few trades today. And we're going to have a little fun, and then I'll just wrap it up, okay? The first trade we did today was a stock called MDB. Uh, they actually beat on earnings, and they raised guidance according to the report. But if you read the report the way we do, and you really read through the report, which is what we do, we were calling for a short on the stock. We wanted to short the stock on any pop towards 148. We wanted to snap to 142. And once it snapped there, we wanted to take it down to 136 for quick six points to the downside. This was a wonderful trade. It actually gave us a lot more to work with. We missed the uh, pop to it by 75 cents, but the stock ended up selling off all the way down to $126 a share today. Broke every level you could think of. And investors just were not impressed. And you know what? We read the report, and neither were we. And that's why we were not long the stock. We were long the stock in pre-market because we knew it was going to pop towards the open, towards that 148 level, and then we were going to short the stock. Our main objective in the chat room at the opening bell was to short the stock. Great call. Next thing we did is Taco, or Tico. This was an earnings beat, small cap, and these have been running lately. And uh, this was pretty thick volume this morning. Uh, Jenny was playing it off the breakout off of four, and I believe he was calling, uh, I think he was calling, I think he was probably calling five or six. When I walked to the chat room, you could see the timeline. I immediately stopped this, made this the number one pick. I had this going to, 750 to eight dollars and i wrote that down and actually pre-market it uh at 610 it already had hit that 750 so then the stock came down i thought it was a nice short pulled just under five i was calling for a four spot bottom curl long it ended up right here around 480 bottom curled and then the flag broke out came and we just played it to the long side i personally was calling nine and 929 I was calling nine dollars and nine twenty nine for traders, and the great dark side came in, and he was calling ten dollars and thirty four cents. So it turned out to be uh, just a beautiful trade. 
and hopefully nobody got hurt on that. Uh, the market makers were pretty evil on this one, but uh, you could tell the way they're trading, every pop was dumped. Next trade that we did today uh, um, was a sweet play that's still for some we're doing right now. Uh, it's called Space. I gave this trade uh, uh, yesterday uh, at seven dollars and eighty cents. Uh, as you can see, it was right here. I gave it at seven dollars and eighty cents. This was our long. I caught it. It was an upgrade swing idea, and I was looking for nine and a half in a couple days. And this morning it paid off. It was a one-day play. I mean, you, you, you scored two points. And some traders actually traded over. I think uh, my friend Oil had 2,000 shares on this, so I think he made four grand on this trade. Uh, and a lot of traders took the trade. It's a nice little overnight swing trade, really nice, paid very well, very inexpensive. Um, it was an analyst call. I was really happy with it. The next trade we did was a stock called DBI. DBI had uh, really bad earnings, and the stock is probably, in my eyes, valued at 13 to 14 dollars a share. It's not going to go back up to 17. It will not gap fill. And so we called for a short covering squeeze at the open based on pre-market highs. We called a long at 14 to go to 15.50, top it off, and then it all day fade back down to 14 to 13. That's exactly what the stock did. <clears throat> really nice trade there. Well described. It was all scripted in chat. Another amazing trade we did today was called Casey. Casey was an earnings play in the chat room. Amazing. This is what we call to actually perfection. We scripted this. Uh, awesome calls, act, chat, determined the value of KC, that the value of the stock was worth 160 today. Before we could hit 160, we needed to pop the stock to 171. We're going to top it off, and then we're going to short the stock to 160. And that's where the stock should be, 160 and under. That's the value we gave it. We act like an analyst, and we treated the stock like we're analyzing the stock based on how we read the report. We valued this stock at 160. So it was just a matter of setting the trade up. Ding, 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 ding. As you can see, there's the 171 pop. Just as scripted, scale in short, take it down, 160. You actually hit 160 in just a matter of uh, 30 minutes. You were done. So imagine doing a 10 point trade with accuracy with 400 shares, four grand on that trade alone. So that was Casey. Another trade we did today was a stock called Mountain. Mountain was a really nice trade, just like Casey. Um, I read the report, analyzed it, determined that the stock would be valued around 233 a share or, or under, and uh, I didn't think this justified this move to the upside. I called for a short. I, before I called for a short, I told everyone in the room the stock was going to hit 242 at the open to not short the stock unless it hits 242. Here's my call to 242. Scale in short, take it to 233 and under. And as you can see, the accuracy of the call. The stock hit $241.84. Scale in short, and it hit 233 uh, in a matter of, I think this one took about two hours to do, just under. And it actually collapsed below that. But if you could see, see how the stock is hovering and grinding between 232 and 233, which is the area that I said the stock would be worth. So not too bad, huh? Okay. Let's uh, do another one that we did in here. Uh, SUPN. This was just uh, another bio play. Yesterday we were bio heaven. Today this was just a... <laughs> I mean, they were screaming short in the stock. This was up very, very thin in the morning. Got a little bit thicker as we got closer to the opening. And I just called for a short and the stock just collapsed. It went down. There was so much selling pressure on it. It, it actually hit 21.85. I was looking for a gap fill 22.75 and under, and it just completely gave an extra point for everyone in the chat room. Then we just went long for another point to the upside, and we were done with it. As you can see, we valued the stock at $22.75, and that's pretty much where it peaked, $22.75. Okay. SUPN. And I will leave you with... One last trade. Uh, I think it was Road. Yeah, hold on. Road, Road, 18, and then a sell off. Uh, DBI, Fred, 
Taco. Taco's running right now. Try to push it into close. I think they're going to only do an off rate. Uh, 296. 290. A and mountain. Um, I'll leave you with uh, SFIX. Stitch. Stitch uh, reported earnings. Um, however, I was really not impressed with the stock. I wanted the stock to pop at the open to 29. I was actually telling traders long the stock at 27, add on dips to 26 at the open, and take it to 29. Once 29 hit, it would just sell, I would it would be a, a sell off, just sell into the push, and then it pretty much fade the stock back down and gap fill it towards 26 dollars a share. I mean that's pretty much the write up on the call, and this is what we did. So if you set this up perfectly, all you had to do is wait for the open. You could have took a pre market. Uh, this 26 27 right there um, and added if it pulled to 26 so you had a nice average I said the stock would go to 29 at the open the stock ended up peaking at 2844 so it still paid you very well buck 40 in the money scale in short take it down and the stock just faded and it's continued to fade it'll probably end up around 2550 by tomorrow that's about it so I did, here's a little stock I gave on the side uh, this was a side note. Bill Ackman took a position at A, and as much as he was gapping up, I, it's, it's to me it's just a gap fill fade right back down to 82 a share. It was no big deal, uh, and I even called it that way. It's right here. Bill Ackman, uh, I went open towards 84, scale in short, 